Hello children and welcome to a new chapter Simple Machines. Now before we get into the chapter, let's first look at what a machine is. Now if you see sewing machine for an example, sewing machine helps us make clothes or stitch clothes very easily and very fast. The same way, if we see washing machine, it helps us wash our clothes really quickly and very very easy. Again, if we take the example of the scissors, it helps us cut paper and clothes pretty easily. So just like the sewing machine, washing machine and the scissors, we have so many household simple machines that make our work easier. So we can also say machines make our work easy and fast. So let's now look at simple machines. Now when we see simple machines, when we saw sewing machine and washing machine, these are pretty complex machines because they are made up of so many parts. Whereas if you take the example like scissors or a knife or tweezers, these are pretty simple machines because they are made up of very very few parts. There are hardly any parts in these three. Now these simple machines can be classified into five types and the complex machines that we studied will be made up of these different types of simple machines. So what are the five simple machines? We have the lever, we have the inclined plane, then we have the screw, we have the pulley and finally we have the wheel and axle. So we will take each of these in detail and study. First, let's look at a lever. Now let's say that we have this rock here and we have to move it all by ourselves. How do we move this rock? Well, it's quite difficult if we have to carry the rock and put it aside. But what if we find a few other things to help us? Let's say that we find a stone nearby and a rod. If we put this rod under the boulder, I think it will be easier for us to move it. How? If you see, this center position is called the fulcrum, which is fixed. We have the load or the boulder, which is the heavy part. Then we have the effort. If we push this rod downwards, this load or this boulder will move upwards. So this sort of an arrangement where there is load, fulcrum and effort involved is called as a lever. So if you notice here, one end of the rod is put under the boulder. So we will call the boulder as the load because it is heavy and this is the material that we have to move. And the stone supports the rod. So you can see the stone is supporting the rod. And the point at which the stone and the rod touch is fixed which is this point here. And this is called as the fulcrum which is represented by a capital F. And when you push down on the opposite side of the boulder, this is an effort. You're putting an effort to push it down. So it is called as effort with a capital E. This type of arrangement where the rod moves freely around the fulcrum is called as a lever. So you can see this part of the rod and this part of the rod can all move apart from the fixed point which is the fulcrum. So this kind of arrangement is what we will call as the lever. Now based on the position of the load, fulcrum and effort, levers are classified into three types. We have first class levers, then we have second class levers and we have third class levers. Let's take each of these and study them in detail. When you see first class levers, the fulcrum is in the center, the load and the effort are on the either side. So you can see F in the center, E and L on the either sides. So as you see here, fulcrum is in the middle, you have load at one end and we have the effort at the other end. So if we have to study this with example, we have the classic seesaw, our favorite favorite thing in the playing ground. So seesaw. Then we have the scissors, we have a claw hammer and we have pliers. So you know in the seesaw this is the fulcrum, we have the load and the effort on the either sides. Same thing with the claw hammer when you are trying to pull out a nail from a board, the nail becomes the load, the effort that you put to pull it out is the effort 
and the fulcrum is the fixed part of the claw hammer. Same thing with the scissors, one side you are putting effort to cut a paper or a plastic which is the load and the center fixed point is the fulcrum. So this kind of arrangement where fulcrum is in the center is called as first class levers. Next is second class levers. Here the load will be in the center and fulcrum and effort will be on the either side. So L will be in the center. So as you see in this image, L which is load is in the center and you have fulcrum and effort on the either ends. Example for this is a wheelbarrow. We have the bottle opener and we have the nutcracker. So if you see in the wheelbarrow here, we put the load in the center, we have the fulcrum or the fixed portion at the end and on the other end we are putting the force to push it which is the effort. Same thing for a nutcracker, we have the load in the center, fulcrum is on one end and effort we are putting on the other end. Again, when we see the bottle opener also, we have the load is in the center, we have the fulcrum in one end and we have effort on the other end. So this kind of arrangement where load is in the center is called as second class levers. Then we have the third class levers. So in third class levers the effort is in the center, fulcrum and load will be on the either ends. So as you can see here, effort is in the center, load is on one end and your fulcrum is on the other end. For this, examples will be the fishing rod, tweezers and tongs. If we see, this is tweezers, the fulcrum or the fixed portion is at one end. We are putting an effort right in the center to pluck out something which is the load from the other end. Same thing if we see the tongs. With tongs, we generally pick up food items like a salad or noodles or pasta. So that is the load. And we're putting an effort in the center of this tong to pick it up. And we have the fulcrum, which is the fixed portion at the end. Again, same thing when we apply to the fishing rod. We have the fulcrum in the end. We're putting an effort towards the center to pull the fish up, which is nothing but the load. So this is about third class levers where effort is in the center. Now we'll move on to the second type of simple machine which is the inclined plane. Now let's travel back in time. How do you think the Egyptians built the massive pyramids? It's such a historic monument, such a huge pyramid built by just humans and they didn't even have construction machines to build these. So how did they build it? They built it with the help of inclined planes. So what is an inclined plane? An inclined plane is a gentle slope that helps us move heavy load with very less effort. So it doesn't even look like a machine. So if you see this here, this is an inclined plane. Does it look like a machine? No, it doesn't look like a machine at all. So this is an inclined plane. So in an inclined plane, if you see, if you're trying to move a heavy load upwards vertically, it takes a lot of effort and lot of energy to push it upwards. Suppose we have a cylinder which is very heavy. Can you just lift it up to the third floor very easily? No, it's extremely difficult if you have to lift it vertically. But if we have a ramp or a sloping edge, we can just roll that material up. So this takes nearly half the effort that it would to travel vertically up. So there are several places where inclined planes are used. For example, we have planks placed on to loading trucks which help us load materials easily. And we have the ramps in hospitals which help wheelchair patients to travel up into the hospital. And we also have the curved mountain roads of the eastern and the western guards which help us reach uphill. Now, if you see these examples, though there is very less effort needed to go up, we in fact travel more distance when we are going up a slope. If you see this example here, this distance to go up vertically is very less when compared to the distance that we go sloping. It's almost double. 
but we don't mind traveling this distance because we are reducing our effort by half ultimately the goal of machines is to make our work easier and simpler so that is very well achieved with the inclined plane we'll move on in the next one which is the screw when you see the screw the screw tells us i look like a nail with grooves cut in me i'm a groovy nail so it's trying to say that it's just a nail but it has grooves in it when you see the screw the screw has winding edges which is called as the thread so these winding edges which go round and round is called as the thread this is nothing but an inclined plane when you see the head of the screw which is this portion you see that it has a groove right let's look at this image here this has a groove for the screwdriver to fit into it now this is a star screwdriver so this is a star screw it's the same shape the screwdriver and the groove will be the same so that this screwdriver can fit into this screw the screw is held against a piece of wood and its head will be turned round and round and as its head is turned with the help of a screwdriver the tip of the nail will move into the wood now an interesting thing is this takes less effort when you compare that to the nail because you have to beat a nail into any object whereas a screw you just need to turn it and it moves in automatically because of its inclined edges and the advantage is that screw holds the wood more firmly than a nail would because it has grooves in it so this works to our advantage now another example for screw is the screw jack so this is a screw jack this helps in lifting cars for repair suppose you have a punctured tire along with the tool kit in the car you even get this screw jack so you just need to put this screw jack under the car and you need to turn this portion round and round as you're turning it this screw jack becomes bigger and bigger and it pushes the car upwards so that you can easily remove and replace the punctured tire so this is the use of the screw jack with this we complete part 1 of the chapter let's do a quick recap of what all we studied we learnt about simple machines we said simple machines were of five different types the five different types were lever we had the inclined plane we had screw we have the wheel and axle and we have the pulley in the lever we saw that there were three different categories we have the first class lever where we have the fulcrum in the middle then we have the second class lever where we have load in the middle we have the third class lever where we have effort in the middle then we went on to talk about the inclined plane we said that inclined plane is nothing but a slopey plane which helps us travel load up with half the effort that it would require we even saw that egyptians used inclined planes to build their pyramids then we spoke about the screw we said that screw is nothing but a nail with grooves cut into it and we saw that the head also has a groove where the screw driver can fit we saw that screw will hold a wood better than a nail and it's also easier to push a screw inside a wood rather than a nail So with this we completed part 1 in part 2 we'll continue with wheel and axle and pulley if you have any doubts at all please get back to us we will definitely answer your queries thank you